my name is Waylon from Safe Rust, and today I'm going to show you my 1937 Indian Juni scope. My dad gave me this project when I was five. We got the project from one of his friends seven years ago. I was there when my dad bought the bike. We have found a bunch more parts since that day. Our plan is to restore this bike in the next few years. These are the original gas tanks, but we have decided to use aftermarket tanks. Originally, this bike was painted red. We found some traces of original paint. Some of the parts we found were NOS, no old stock. This means they were unused parts from Indian from the 1930s. Like this armature like these brake linings, like this piston and rings. Mm. We also found some NOS gears and shafts for our transmission. We even found some new old stock bushings. We even have some new old stock bearings. have a new old stock relay. Lots of original components we'll need to rebuild. Including flywheels, engine cases, we got heads, we got extra barrels, um, oil pumps, distributor, carburetors, all the transmission, and so much more. Some of the problems we have though is um, the engine cases have to be uh, re-welded. There's been some issues. So out of the two sets, we'll have one good set. And then we've already gotten one good set of flywheels. And there is a difference between the uh, flywheels from 36 to 39, they use a bushing on the output shaft, but in 1940 and later, they use a bearing. So there's some differences on the um, flywheels. The handlebars need repairing and the horn mount. And we'll have to fix up the headlight mount also. You can see a previous weld. But that's what happens when it's 80 years old. You have to repair a lot of components in order to get these bikes back on the road. But our fenders are actually in really good shape. Both fenders don't even have any rust issues. This is the original seat, but we're going to have to recover it. So it looks like I think that's horsehair. It's nice, but we'll see what we can do to save it possibly. But more than likely, it'll need a complete uh, recover. Should look like. What's interesting is the transmission hangs from under the frame as opposed to other models. This is a hand shift foot clutch motorcycle. This is the foot clutch. What this is is a bypass to the muffler. This is gas, gas, and oil. One. This is a two-piece frame where the rear section bolts to the front section. This is an Indian girder front end.
This is the linker carb copper mesh air filter and inner and outer cover. Our idea is to paint this back to factory red. So some of the future work we have to do is we need a front strap on the front fender. There's a couple holes in the frame that we're gonna have to fix and fill. Um, fit the fenders better, fill up the holes, and some repairs on the front girder, front end. Reassemble it, make sure all the parts fit, fit nice, and try and figure out exactly what we're missing again. Uh, we've done this a few times where we take it apart, put it back together, just see what, we're ha what we have, and then any parts that we've gotten in the, the last little bit, we add to it. Still lots of, lots of work to be done before we even get close to paint, but um, hope you appreciate the amount of work and time and effort and money that goes into these bikes. And this is a rare bike, at least in this part of the, in Canada. Um, we're lucky enough we have two junior scouts, but we are aware of only two more in the province of Manitoba at this point. So really, you're seeing one example out of four at this point in Manitoba, Canada. So rare bike, hard to find parts for, and that's fun though. It's a, it's a challenge that we enjoy, and Waylon will be riding this bike before he's 16, that's for sure. So here is the other Junior Scout we own. That is an extremely rare 1940 Junior Scout. Um, I had found the motor in a, an old bike shop, an old motorcycle shop here in town called Canadian Motorcycle. Same place I got the uh, the sign. And um, it was about two years later, I found the chassis, um, local also, um, came up, but it came out of uh, Thunder Bay, Canada, Thunder Bay, Ontario, Canada. So what's interesting about this is this is a one year only um, bike. It's got, uh, so 1940, it had full fenders, had unique tanks. There was a shroud behind the headlight. Uh, the front backing plate was unique and a few other pieces. So this is really rare. So in 36, they came out with the Junior Scout. I think it was called a Pony before and 36 to 39 had open fenders like the one that uh, we just showed you that Whalen has and then in 40 they went to the full fenders because that's when they introduced the full fenders onto the chief um and maybe a scout i can't remember and the junior scout had it but only for one year and then in 41 42 they had to kind of a limited production of uh junior scouts and they were back to the open fender so this is kind of rare well it is rare from the research I've done, there might be a dozen of these um, in the world, maybe more, but uh, they are a very, very rare piece. Um, the motor and frame don't match, but you know what? You're lucky to just be able to find a 1940 and a 1940 chassis. So that's a really cool piece. I'm very happy with it. Uh, Wish I could find more stuff like that. Check out our other videos. Thanks for the support. Like and subscribe. This is Waylon from Save Rust. This is who we are. This is what we do.